So you want to convert your car from gas to EV? Here's how you do it. First, come up with a plan. Is your car front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, 4x4, or all wheel drive? This will dictate how your conversion will be powered. You need to figure out how to get the power from the electric motor to your wheels. Some cars have a transverse or hamburger orientation of the engine, while others are longitudinal, hot dog. Transverse layout will allow you to place an electric drive unit in the same location as your original engine and run CV axles to your drive wheels. If the layout is longitudinal, then you will need to decide if you want to use a transmission or a single speed gear reduction unit to then power the drive shaft. There are benefits to both, but the most important part is to make sure the gear ratio or final drive is correct for the electric motor's RPM range and the vehicle speed you want to achieve. If the gearing is too low or short, then the top speed will be limited. If the gearing is too high or tall, then the vehicle will be sluggish to accelerate. Next, you need to figure out where the battery will go. I highly recommend that the battery is not inside the passenger compartment. This is a personal decision, but lithium batteries put off poisonous HF gas when they overheat or catch fire. It can be very dangerous to be in the passenger compartment with this gas. For instance, if you are on the highway and cannot pull over immediately and get out of the car. The best places to put the batteries are under the hood where the original engine was or underneath the chassis. It is also very important that the battery box is fully waterproof and sealed against the elements. I also recommend using some sort of waterproof vent on the box to equalize the pressure inside the box to the outside world without allowing moisture, dust, or other contaminants from entering the box. The box needs to be strong to protect the fragile battery cells inside. The high voltage wiring needs to be protected from chafing, vibration, and routed safely. The battery cells or modules need to be securely mounted inside the battery box with bolts so that they cannot come loose while driving. The battery is the most important and most fragile part of an EV conversion and needs to be taken seriously. Now it's time to remove the original engine and associated components like the exhaust, fuel tank, fuel lines, transmission, radiator, oil cooler, and fuel filter. Once you have a plan on how to power your vehicle and where to place the battery, you will need to figure out what sort of controller or VCU, vehicle control unit, you will use and also what BMS, battery management system, you will use. This will be dictated by the hardware choices you've made. Not all VCUs can control all EV systems. Some can control multiple systems and some can only co control a single type. Some VCUs need to be programmed to work properly with your hardware or tuned to get the correct power output from the motor. The BMS needs to be compatible with the chosen controller as well and properly configured for the battery type, number of cells, and operating voltage. The BMS monitors all the cells in the high voltage battery and keeps them balanced. It can also limit charge and discharge current and monitor the temperature of the battery to keep it healthy. A BMS is an absolute requirement for lithium batteries. Without one, you risk damaging the battery or other systems. Other EV components that you will have to account for is the charger, motor, inverter, fuses, and relays, push button panel to choose drive neutral and reverse, and cooling system, radiator pumps, and hose routing. Some components need to be liquid cooled while others do not. These could include the battery, motor, inverter, and charger. High voltage above 48 volts is very dangerous to work with. It is a good idea to take a high voltage education course to learn more about the dangers of high voltage and how to work with it safely. After you have planned out these major parts of your conversion, it's time to start building. The electric motor should be mounted using rubber or other material isolation of some sort. You can reuse the original EV motor mounts and adapt them to your vehicle, or you can use the engine mounts of the vehicle to be converted. Do not hard mount the motor to the chassis. It needs to have somewhat flexible mounts so that the movement of the motor during acceleration or regenerative braking will not stress or crack the metal of the motor and limit the vibrations from shaking the vehicle while driving. It is very important that the alignment of the electric motor and the rest of the drivetrain is as perfect as possible. Any misalignment can cause early failure of the motor or other parts. You will likely need to fabricate many parts from motor mounts, drive shafts, or axle adapters, a coupler from the motor to the original transmission, some skills that will help, welding, automotive fabrication experience, or a friendly shop or helpful friends to assist you with this. It can be helpful to design the battery box in CAD so that you can make the most efficient use of the available space in the vehicle. The battery box needs to be securely mounted to the chassis and protected from possible damage like road debris. The high voltage cables from the battery box should also be very well protected using conduit or sheathing. I also recommend using shielding around this wire to stop electromagnetic interference from affecting other systems in the vehicle. 
If done correctly, the battery will last years and years without maintenance. Other high voltage components like the contactors, high voltage fuse, current sensor, and BMS should also be contained in the battery box or an auxiliary box, which is also waterproof and sealed from the elements. Any high voltage components that are exposed to high voltage from the battery to the contactors should be treated the same as the high voltage battery itself. Under no circumstances should the high voltage system be grounded to the vehicle chassis. Use a mega ohm meter to test the isolation of your high voltage battery and components. This step is crucial to ensure, to ensure the safety of your conversion. A mega meter, when properly used, will measure the resistance between the high voltage source and the vehicle chassis. If there is not enough resistance, high voltage could be present in the vehicle and can lead to damage to components, injury, or death. This is a critical step to ensuring the safety of your conversion. After these major components have been mounted, then it's time to start the low voltage signal wiring. Many components will need low voltage wiring, CAN bus wiring, and connections to relays, and it's best if the system is powered up by the original ignition switch in the vehicle so that you can use the original key to start the vehicle. CAN bus wiring should be done with twisted pairs so that the signal is not disrupted. The low voltage wiring should be neatly arranged and protected with conduit, electrical tape, or other methods. Follow the wiring diagrams supplied with your chosen hardware. If your vehicle has power steering, you will need to use an electric power steering pump in place of the original engine powered pump. Likewise, most braking systems are powered by engine vacuum. If this is the case, you can use a simple electric vacuum pump or you can switch to a fully electric brake booster. Anything to do with the steering and brakes should be well thought out so that these critical safety systems are reliable and robust. The original ABS system, if fitted, should still work as long as any components associated with it are maintained. No attempt to drive the vehicle should be made until the brakes and steering are properly configured and tested. The original vehicle air conditioner and heater will need to be modified or replaced with new components powered by electricity. The electric motor and battery will not provide enough heat to heat the cabin of the vehicle, so you will need a resistance type heater adapted to the liquid heater core in your vehicle. Otherwise, you can use a heat pump type heater. An electric AC compressor can be adapted to the original vehicle's AC system, but will likely need custom hoses or fittings and the correct amount of refrigerant. If you've made it this far, you are well on your way to driving your custom EV conversion. The next step should be methodical testing of the vehicle. Make sure your BMS is correctly configured and operating as it should. Test your charger and make sure that it charges the battery at the correct voltage and shuts off when the battery is full. If possible, test the motor with the transmission in neutral or with the vehicle on jack stands so it will not move the vehicle. Make sure when the motor spins that there is minimal or no vibration throughout the vehicle. After these tests are complete, it's time for a test drive. Take your test drive cautiously at slow speeds and short distances at first. You may find problems with power delivery, jerking acceleration, weak brakes, regenerative braking being too powerful and causing the tires to slip, or even runaway throttle or unintended acceleration. It's important to start slow and methodically so that you can be as safe as possible during the test driving stage. Monitor the battery voltage, current, BMS balance, and other parameters, and make sure everything is reacting in an expected way. From here on out, you can fine tune the vehicle and make improvements as you see fit. EV conversions are complicated and can be dangerous. If you are at all hesitant or unable to convert your conversion, please reach out to EV Swap Conversions for consulting or conversion services. Visit our website at EV Swap Conversions to get in touch.